Sometimes the best offense is a good defense. That is certainly the case with stocks these days, as inflation and rising interest rates have really hurt the economy. economy is struggling. Geopolitical tensions in Europe, questionable policies under the current administration, and continued supply issues aren't helping either. Not helping. As stocks have entered a bear market, <laughs> these macroeconomic conditions have increased market volatility and forced investors towards defensive plays. Not defensive is defensive. That's why we're gonna look at seven defensive ETFs for a recession. Ryan Jackson, a research analyst of passive funds at Morningstar, told the Wall Street Journal that investors want safety and security in the present market and the following ETFs offered them a smooth ride. It's nice. Jackson also compared defensive ETFs to house cats in his interview, warning that they're going to do what you expect most of the time, but they'll misbehave every once in a while because it's in their nature. Investments in defensive ETFs are likely to increase in the next few months as the Fed continues to tighten the fiscal noose. The aim of this video is to provide viewers with a basic rundown of some of the top ETFs in the US that have the best chance to provide investors with cover against a recession. All the ETFs I'll mention trade on exchanges in the United States. This is the only place. As I go through these seven rather quickly, I'll look at the returns, the expense ratios, and some of the holdings that the funds hold. First on the list is the Invesco Defensive Equity ETF, ticker symbol DEF. The fund will invest at least 80% of its total assets in securities that comprise the index. The index is designed to provide exposure to securities of large cap US issuers. The index uses a rule-based approach to select companies that potentially have superior risk return profiles during periods of stock market weakness while still offering the potential for gains during periods of market strength. As we take a look at this fund's snapshot, you can see as with the entire market, it is down year to date as well as the one year return. There's no surprise there. There is an expense ratio of 0.55% and it pays a 78 cent annual dividend. Here are the top 10 holdings in this fund as well as the stock market sector weightings. Moving on to our second ETF, that is the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation Index Fund ETF, ticker symbol VIG. It tracks the performance of the S&P US Dividend Growers Index that measures the investment return of common stocks of companies that have a record of increasing dividends over time. Its top 10 holdings are on the screen with United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson, Microsoft, Procter & Gamble, and JP Morgan Chase rounding out the top five. This ETF is heaviest in financial services with consumer services, healthcare, and industrials, as well as technology, not far behind. Now, as you take a look at the fund snapshot, you can see the very cheap expense ratio, which Vanguard is absolutely known for. The fund currently pays a quarterly dividend of 69 cents. Moving on, we have the Invesco S&P 500 low volatility ETF, ticker symbol SPLV. This is the second of three Invesco funds that you're gonna see on this list. This is an ETF that tracks the investment returns of the S&P 500 index. Now this fund only invests in the 100 least volatile companies of the index over the past 12 months as determined by the index provider. Top 10 holdings are very evenly spread out with each carrying between 1.32% and 1.14% of the net assets in the fund. Consumer defensive and utilities are the most heavily weighted sectors. Now, as we look at this snapshot, what stands out to me is, you know, that one year return as opposed to the other two funds were, that were discussed. This one is positive, which is obviously uh, nice to see. The expense ratio is 0.25% and it pays an 11 cent monthly dividend. Next on the list is the JP Morgan US Value Factor ETF, ticker symbol JVAL. This is an exchange traded fund that invests at least 90% of net assets in an index that tracks the performance of companies based on certain value metrics. These metrics include, but are not really limited to, attractive valuations, book yield, and dividend yield. United Health Group takes the lead in the list of the top 10 holds with Apple and Microsoft not too far behind. In regards to sector weight, technology takes the gold 
with more than 24%. The fund snapshot shows quarterly dividends of 18 cents and an expense ratio of 0.12%. Fifth on the list is the Vanguard Value Index Fund, ticker symbol VTV. Now this is a fund that tracks the performance of the CRSP, US Large Cap Value Index, and this index comprises value stocks of large companies that trade on the exchanges in the United States. United Health Group once again tops out the top 10 with Berkshire Hathaway a close second. Healthcare and financial services are the top two sector weighted categories. When you're looking at the snapshot, you can see there is a mere expense ratio of 0.04%. Truly amazing. It also produces a quarterly dividend of 84 cents. Moving right along, Vanguard Consumer Staples Fund, ticker symbol VDC, is next on the list. This is an exchange traded fund that invests in securities on the MSCI US Investable Market Index Consumer Staples 2550. The index comprises large mid cap and small cap companies that operate in the consumer staples sector in the United States. The Vanguard Consumer Staples Fund holds a large stake in Procter & Gamble, ticker symbol PG, a company that markets consumer packaged goods. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Costco, and Walmart are the other companies rounding out the top five. Now, as you would imagine, more than 97% of this fund is consumer defensive. Expense ratio is 0.10% and the fund pays a $1.21 quarterly dividend payment. Last on the list is the Invesco S&P Pure Value ETF, ticker symbol RPV. This is an exchange traded fund that tracks the performance of the S&P 500 index and invests at least 90% of the net assets and securities that exhibit strong value characteristics in the underlying index. The top 10 holdings are rather evenly distributed Financial services overwhelmingly takes the win for the highest sector weight. In the fund snapshot, you can see this fund has performed the best overall in the one year return. It has an expense ratio of 0.35% and pays a quarterly 38 cent dividend. Now this video was not sponsored by Vanguard or Invesco, as I'm sure you might be wondering as you see three funds from each included in this video. But our extensive research led us to these seven. Now there are tons of funds out there, but these seven defensive ETFs in the case of a recession caught our attention. We want to know what you think. Did we leave some of the ETFs that you think are solid in times of recession off this list? If you think we did, please let us know in the comments below. We love really hearing from you, so if we did, please let us know or just say hi. Thank you so much for watching. Happy investing and I'll see you in the next video.